everyone, and welcome to this edition of Water Drops. Today we're going to be talking about basic sanitary network design in info drainage. If you're familiar with the videos that I typically put out on info drainage, you'll know that I'm normally talking about the stormwater modeling aspect of that program. Info drainage really is purpose built for stormwater modeling and design, but you might not know that info drainage also has some sanitary modeling capabilities. So this workflow is for site designers who might also be responsible for sanitary utility sizing. And so what we'll do is just go through a very simple example of sizing a sanitary network within info drainage. So first we'll convert that stormwater phase to a sanitary phase. We'll then add sanitary flow data to the subcatchments. We'll then use the network design wizard to size the network. And then we'll review the results. And so here we are with an info drainage. You can see that we have a very basic storm network in here. We have just some pipes, we have manholes, and we have catchment areas. Because we do have some sanitary phases already in here, you can see that this storm phase one in the active phase selector here has this suffix of storm to just tell us what kind of network we're looking at. When you do import data from Civil 3D, it'll automatically be added as a storm phase, but you can send data from Civil 3D to that storm phase and quickly duplicate that to a sanitary phase. So all you'll do there, right click on the phase here and select switch to sanitary. And so now you can see that we don't have any more storm phases and we have a plethora here of sanitary phases. The reason that we have more than one is because I've already created some of these sanitary phases. Uh, but if I just switch to this most recent one here, basically that is just the storm phase that we had. And so the difference here is just that this analysis tab and this rainfall and pollutants tab are grayed out. If you're familiar with running info drainage for your stormwater control networks, of course this analysis tab is where we run the full EPA swim analysis. But Sanitary sewer design is a bit simpler. We're just going to design just for a 75% full capacity, and we don't really need that full dynamic solution for just sizing of a sanitary network. If you do want to run a swim analysis with these sanitary flows, once you've concluded the model, run this network design wizard and initially sized that network, you can easily switch that sanitary network back to a storm network then those sanitary file flows will be converted to base flows, and those base flows will be the input required to design combined sewers or run any other sort of swim analysis that might be required. Other differences that you might notice if we go into these sanitary catchment areas, this input window is going to look different than if this were a storm phase. So in this dynamic sizing, table here. It's a little confusing that this is still called uh, dynamic sizing where we're not running a full dynamic analysis, but this is just where the sanitary modeling capabilities are going to live. And so here we can see we have the ability to add industrial flow and domestic flow. There's the capability to calculate the sizes of these based on a discharge unit. So you could go in here and set up the number of appliances if you want it to get that granular in your sanitary design or you can just use this main discharge method where this is, should be a little more straightforward in terms of having a flow per dwelling this isn't cubic feet per day typically this is represented in gallons per day um, but that's a pretty easy workaround and then in this calculate flow per dwelling we can also uh, essentially calculate that that flow per dwelling if we have a flow rate per person for example and then an average persons per dwelling, a domestic peak factor, and so on and so forth. So let's actually go ahead and enter some of these parameters here. So let's assume an average flow per person of 10 cubic feet per day. Let's associate an average of three and a half persons per dwelling, and we'll keep that domestic peak factor of six. And you can see that that calculates our flow per dwelling at 210 cubic feet per day. Here also, you'll designate the number of dwellings within that kitchen area. For all intents and purposes of this demonstration, we will assume 10 dwellings per catchment area. And if I press apply, 
you can see that resulting flow rate per catchment area uh, be auto populated here. So we'll go ahead and accept those changes to the network. We can go ahead and look at the flow path that's already set up of this pipe network. You can see that these manholes don't have any shape or parameters associated with them already. Uh, this pipe network is just sort of sitting on top of our surface here. And so we'll go ahead and want to size this network and not only make sure that these pipes are going to have capacity for the flow in each of these catchment areas, but also uh, essentially give those manholes some parameters so that they're not just blank. But first, uh, you might have noticed that I only changed one catchment area, so we'll go ahead and make essentially all those changes to the rest of the catchment areas. And so the way that you can do those batch edits in InfoDrainage is within this build tab. If I go to these tables, this is where we can do some of that batch editing. So you can see here, I'm looking at my inflow areas. If I expand these catchment areas, and then make sure that these parameters are turned on so I can view them in this table. You can see where I made those changes to that first catchment area, uh, but we want to essentially duplicate those and apply that to all our catchment areas. These are grayed out because I have the discharge unit calculation method applied. So first thing we'll do is change all of this to the main drainage. When I selected this row, you can see that this equal sign turned on. So now I can apply this main drainage to all of those different elements. And I lost my data here for the flow per dwelling, but that's okay. You can remember what that is. Highlight this column, and then we'll do the same thing. And just apply this data to each of those rows. And so that's how you can do some of those batch edits within InfoDrainage. Now I'll press apply and save those changes to those catchment areas. And so now we're ready to size this network and we'll use the network design wizard. I do have a water drop for the network design wizard for stormwater elements. It's going to look very similar for sizing sanitary networks. Here you'll just see the overview of all the different pipes that you have in your branch and you can choose to lock individual elements if you do want to keep anything constant and not make changes to a particular element, you can add those uh, locks here. And now we'll enter in some design criteria. The first thing here I'll want to make sure is that I have a pipe size library loaded. You can tell that this pipe size library is not um, really what we want here, so I do have a template of this US default pipe size library. And you can see uh, that these are actual pipe sizes that we might want to use. I do have a variety of lock slope options. I'm not going to select any of these, but of course you can hold steady the slopes, the slopes and inverts, or slope and crown elevations. I am going to switch to the full bore velocity, uh, check velocity. I'm going to change these velocity requirements to something a little more uh, reasonable. I am also going to select this limit pipe full conditions for this design. I'm also going to change just this minimum cover depth. But you can see here the different parameters that you can add to help size your network and get this exactly how you want it to be. So now I'll press next. And so now we can see highlighted all of the changes that the network design wizard made. So I started out with six inch pipes. The program's telling me that, hey, we probably only need four inch pipes, with this, which is pretty typical for a standard residential uh, sanitary network tie-in here. You can also see that all my invert elevations have been changed. If you can recall, when we first pulled up that flow path, those pipes were just kind of sitting on top of the surface. So this makes sense that this is essentially putting our pipe network underneath the ground. We also added that uh, cover depth elevation requirement. And so that's kind of what we're seeing here. And we also just had some pipe slope changes made as well. And so once you press finish, the network design report will show up. This full sanitary view will kind of give you the most information about 
the changes that were made and the new parameters of your pipe network. And because, again, we're not running that full swim analysis on sanitary networks, this network design report is going to be where you'll export these results from. So in InfoDrainage, if you're, again, if you're using it for stormwater design, we'll run that full dynamic solution. And then we have uh, information in the results tab here. You can, however, still run an audit report. Uh, so in here, you'll see just the familiar types of things that you can run an audit on. And a few are grayed out. So for example, the rainfall data is grayed out for sanitary networks. The info drainage sanitary network capabilities are strictly for dry weather flows. You're not going to be doing uh, sort of extended period simulations or doing those INI type of studies. Again, this is really just a sizing tool for some of your uh, basic sanitary pipe networks, but you can perform audits for different criteria as you can see here. And so that really sums up the sanitary modeling capabilities within info drainage. We added a pipe network from a storm network to a sanitary network, added some flow criteria to our catchment areas relating to those sanitary flow calculations. And then we use the network design wizard, similar to how we would use it for stormwater control networks, but to size our sanitary networks as well. So the benefit of doing this within info drainage, you know, it is kind of just a calculator rather than a full dynamic solution of a sanitary network, but being able to do some of that preliminary sizing in the same location as your stormwater networks is just relatively convenient. It's nice to be able to do those things in one place. Uh, but really kind of where the major benefit comes from, uh, and that will be a future water depth coming soon, is being able to utilize Info Drainage's class detection tool to make sure that your sanitary networks and storm net water networks are within or not within a certain distance from each other. Um, and so again, that'll be a, another water drop that we have coming out soon. Um, and another benefit here too, you know, you can actually automate some of that sizing. So you're not having to guess and check on each individual element, but you can uh, use the network design wizard to auto populate some of those diameters, those slopes, those invert elevations, and so on and so forth. And so hopefully this was informative to those of you who are curious about InfoDrainage's sanitary modeling capabilities. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you again soon.